Autoridades. Authorities, ladies and gentlemen. Tenerife Island Council was uh, extremely generous. And in fact, I cannot express in only four words the, the generosity that they have afforded to me by being able to open this extremely important event for Tenerife and for the Canary Islands. This, their joint gesture of generosity has allowed me to be able to just say a few words and to recognize the road that we've traveled here on the island. It is a privilege for me to be able to speak to you, but also I'd like to pay tribute to the generosity of every one of the 31 mayors of the island, of the island in the 1980s and 1984, and all of the town councils that came together in the island council who unanimously voted in an agreement. This agreement allowed every single town council to work bilaterally with the island council and thanks to this agreement we were able to establish this plan that you have seen in the video. Therefore, I'd like to recognize and acknowledge everybody. I would like to also pay tribute to all of those hundreds of public representatives who uh, looked at the situation and did all that they possibly could back in the 80s. So I would like to therefore give a vote of thanks. I really am enormously grateful to you. But if we do look back in time, this video was made at the beginning of 1985, so that was over 30 years ago. But if we go even further back in time to the 1970s and the 1980s, we had a political transition in Spain, a great deal of social complexity. We were progressing towards a democratic country. And at the end of the 1970s, the institutions had not yet been voted in by the people. It was then that we began to set up our democratic institutions. And at this time, on the island of Tenerife, we had more than 200 landfills. As many as 240, we've had 220, but this is a huge number of landfills for the limited land area that we have on this island. And at this time, we had an enormous institutional complexity. I don't really want to go into any detail, but these were the problems that we had to face up to at this time. So how was the island when we set up this island waste management plan? Now, the mayor of Santa Cruz spoke about the Palmetum, but in those days, 13 town councils from the island uh, sent all their waste rubbish, in plain words. Obviously, we're going back in time. We didn't call it waste. We call it rubbish, garbage, trash. So 13 town councils uh, surrounding uh, Santa Cruz sent their waste to what we call the Lazaretto. That was the name that we gave to the area where the Palmetum now is standing. And then at the beginning of the 1980s, we mm, tried in some way to begin to control our waste based on town management plans, but basically everything ended up in the Lazaretto which is right next to this auditorium. And this was a uh, land reclaimed from the sea. And we had a hill that was over 40 meters high. And of course, this was being undermined by the sea at all times. 
and we didn't have any kind of technical control of this landfill. We did not seal it off or waterproof it. And this meant that we had leachate uh, filling the sea and we had methane production as the rubbish decomposed, basically because we didn't have a gas evacuation system in place. So a mixture of different problems. We also had 200 different landfills in various different areas of the island. Punta del Hidalgo in the north, in Tamaimo, if you've heard of these places. Mm, but these are various different areas, uh, different points on the island where we had landfills. Over 200 of them. Oh, the Tenerife Island Council was a council that looked at the island as an entire entity. Therefore, we took a forward step and we brought together all the various different competencies of the town island councils. And in January 1983, we finally had a meeting where we signed an agreement together with the 31 different town councils. Mm. And in this agreement, in 4.C, we stipulated that the Island Council and the 31 Town Councils accepted to cooperate together to manage its waste. And this was mentioned in 4.C. We said that the Town Councils will commit to close all illegal landfills from the moment that we signed the agreement and we will work alongside the Island Council to prevent new landfills being set up in their respective town councils. And then in 4B, the town council is also committed to no longer supply waste to any of the landfills that are no longer necessary for waste management services. And then we created a waste disposal plan for the islands, waste disposal and treatment. Uh, whereby we would therefore treat all the waste from the various different landfills in the various different town councils. Then, in nine, the following year, we set up the next stage. In 2007, we had our first recycling plant, selective collection in 94 of glass, and then 2003 of light packaging, and then car uh, cartons and cardboard packaging. So these are various different stages and the Island Council then designed a land management plan for waste management on the island as a whole. So these are the various different stages that we've gone through in the past. And um, I think we are at a ripe moment now to evaluate everything we've done in the past. But I'd like now to consider the work of all the institutional representatives, the technical staff, university, academia, and I'd like to offer them my own personal consideration because I have been working over the last two or three decades with the environmental department of the National Congress. So what is our future? Mr. Valbuena, the Island Council representative, said that we are fully committed now to a circular economy. When we manage our waste, we need to think of the perspective of the circular economy. This is the approach. So what is the next stage? Well, I'd like to focus on the last three months of last year, 2015. In 2015, I personally think that this was an important time for Spain because we are laying the foundations for sustainable management of our waste so that we can have a transition from a linear economy that we've had in the past based on um, management of resources 
to a circular economy approach. We must now base on production and consumption processes that are efficient in the use of resources. And in the very last quarter of last year, we had three significant moments for our country. And I think these are going to lay the path for what we're going to do over the coming years. First, in October last year, the Senate had a plenary and all the regional institutions came together and the Senate unanimously approved a project that had been prepared over the previous year, over 2015, and this was a study on evaluating waste management and analysis and a strategy to be folded that was in line with the European strategy. And then we published the uh, statewide framework for waste management. This was drawn up by the government of Spain. And then thirdly, in December, we set up our new circular economy package. This was presented by the European Commission. Now in terms of municipal waste collection, we all know what our present plan is. We need to recycle up to 70% um, of everything by 2020. 35% 35 correction uh, of 35% was a 1995 figure, and this obviously has changed uh, between that then and the present date. And 22 stroke 2002 law on waste management was uh, a consolidation of this plan so that we can further manage our waste better. So the Senate, therefore, examined these previous laws and they allowed us to follow the historical process of waste management over the previous years. They looked at this waste management study and then they approved this waste management study in October last year, 2015. Now, mm, this new law is a mandate for us as members of a democracy. And this document was based on waste management, management of resources, which is in turn based on the circular economy. And if we look at the conclusions of this document, it states that all of the various different local administrations have to have an effective and active prevention policy. And in fact, the island council and the town councils of this island, Tenerife, are now doing this in collaboration with the regional government. And the document says that waste management should be a priority area for all local councils. In fact, we've heard this from the chair of the council and various different speakers previously, that they are committed to this plan. And we also need to have a, uh, a fiscal approach to waste management. And we need people to pay as they create the waste. And we therefore also need to be able to have a financial plan that reflects the real cost of waste production. And we also need to have an pro extended produ producer responsibility approach that will allow us, allow us to improve waste management and monitoring. We also need to make progress in the so-called second life of waste when it is then passed on to the market once again as part of the cycle economy. So this is the plan, the document that was approved by the Senate. And then in November, we had the state framework program for waste management for 2016-2022. And this framework program has various different areas that I think that we need to focus on for the future. Now, 
we are already aware of the European Commission's framework program for a circular economy that was passed in the previous month. And the government plan is focused only on waste management itself. Some regions have already introduced legislation to encourage a circular economy. And this plan focuses on recycling initiatives between now and 2020. These initiatives that were laid down for us by the European Commission in compliance with biodegradable approaches for 2016. And there are many different areas for our consideration, but I won't go into any further detail. But then came to December, the last month of last year, the circular economy package from the pers perspective of the European Commission. On 2nd of December last year, the Commission presented a new document. This is the European Circular Economy Action Plan. The name is Closing the Circle. We need to develop this circular economy package we need to do it in uh, establishing objectives that go beyond what has been laid down for us in this plan. We need to look towards 2030 and 2030 and beyond as we recycle and dispose of our waste. And we therefore need to lay down the objectives for this plan. And as an annex to this main communication, we have also various different areas to be carried out in different fields, in consumption, in production, in waste management, in uh, raw material use, in innovation, various different sectors, and in monitoring and control. And this is basically a review of EU directives, and these directives are being implemented and we now to see exactly how we're going to use these to better cooperate against illegal transport of waste. We also need energy recovery initiatives, we need good practices in waste management and so on and so forth. So I've talked about these three key months last year. We have three lines of action and these have made it clear to all that there is a wide-ranging concern first of all on the part of the Spanish uh, public sector we have the Spanish government and then finally we have the governments of the regions of Spain and then finally we have Mm, the concern that has been voiced by the European Commission and the initiatives that it has introduced. So this is an ideal moment for us to begin to make progress in every different area so that we can reach out to our citizens and we can make them aware of our position and our approaches. So therefore, I as a citizen of the island of Tenerife, I as a Canary Islander, I'm extremely satisfied by the work that has been done by the Tenerife Island Council because they are modernizing, they're modernizing environmental attitudes and this island has been a pioneer in this area over recent years. So I would therefore like to reiterate my personal gratitude, my gratitude for allowing me to speak today and as we're talking about the circular economy to come full circle and pay tribute to those very first democratic mayors of the Spanish transition, obviously most of them have retired by now, but I think their vision was so generous, so far reaching and they opened up their, uh, the powers, the competence, something that we restrict so much, and they transferred 
their council competence to the island council because they saw the island as a whole and I think 30 years later we can be fully satisfied with work that was done at that time and now I think is an ideal moment for us to look forward as they looked forward in their time so congratulations to Tenerife Island Council congratulations to all of you who worked in the different professional and institutional areas who came together and helped us to set up this sustainable management plan which has been the commitment from our institution always so thank you for your generosity and thank you for the generosity of listening to my words today thank you thank you all of you